When Jake Mace was a teenager, his parents moved him from the temperate rainforest of British Columbia to the Sonoran deserts of Arizona. It was in Arizona where Jake and I met, fell in love, and together decided to move to the wild beauty and extreme remoteness of British Columbia. Our property is only accessible by boat, and we use our inflatable striker as our fishing, crabbing, and prawning vehicle, but also our lifeline to the modern world. We named our property Komorebi because when the sun pours through the trees of the forest, it feels like heaven's gates are open. We lived in a delicate van as we got to work storing firewood and building a 30-foot diameter yurt. Jake had stayed in a yurt during his time in Mongolia, and we felt like a yurt was a structure and home which the two of us could build in the forest and live in quite comfortably. This is so nice. It's so nice. Like, look at this. Oh, we have a home. The hardest part of erecting the yurt was building the yurt platform. While completing the yurt lattice wall, roof rafters, side cover, and center ring with dome was a fun adventure. I don't think this is gonna happen, I can't. Okay, keep pulling. Yep. Okay, keep pulling. Okay, I got it now. I got okay, it. I don't have it anymore. I got it. They are officially closed in. We now have been living in the yurt for almost four years. Here's how it looks today. Hey, my name is Nicole and my fiance and I have been living in this beautiful yurt behind us for the last four years. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a yurt tour of the inside and the outside to show you guys what yurt life is really all about. I'm also talking kind of quiet because my 10 month old is sleeping right now. So it's not just Jake and I, we have a little baby. His name is Fox. So let me show you what your life is with a family of three. So here's our massive wood shed. This is the first year that we filled it up all the way to the top. Well, Jake did, not me, um, he crushed it. But we do all of our heating with wood, Plus about 95% of all of our cooking is done with fire. So we have to store a lot of wood away. So here's our wood pile. We probably go through about eight to 10 cords of wood per season. So the first year that we were here, it was really hard to dry our firewood out. Uh, we were new to the area and didn't know what it took. Um, so lighting our wood stove, we had a lot of smoke in the yurt and it was very cold. Um, thank goodness it was just Jake and I, but we huddled together to stay warm. But yeah, so it's seeing this filled like this with really dry wood just warms my heart it's easier for us to survive in year four with all of this properly seasoned wood lately i've upgraded my wallet to be more organized more rfid secure and more minimalist with the ridge wallet opening my new ridge wallet i'm loving the color i chose and how the ridge feels so high quality in my hands they even include a nice tool and extra screws just in case it holds all my cards so neatly and efficiently and tucks my cash away in the back I can choose to carry my ridge in my back or front pocket, and I love how when it's tucked in my pants, it feels like hardly anything is there. Right now, you can save up to 40% through December 22nd. Head to the link ridge.com slash offgrid to see the wide variety of wallets and key cases they have available. 
One thing I found that's hard about living off the grid is staying organized, especially with our keys, whether it's a wood chipper or a boat. So I was happy to find the Ridge key case. It has that minimalist type of design like the Ridge wallet. And all I do is I take my finger and I push right here and all those keys that I use for different locks and doors on Appa, the sailboat, are kind of tucked away nice sleek. So this Ridge key case helping me stay more minimalist, less bulk in my pocket, and now I'm more of a happy camper. Get the best offer with the link ridge.com slash off grid. I found a new reason why I like the Ridge wallet. Check this out. <laughs> he smiles every time that he holds it. <laughs> Do you like this? This is our salmon smokehouse. If you guys want to watch us uh, build it from start to finish, go check that out. Uh, we're not smoking any salmon right now, um, so it's just sitting here looking beautiful. But it works fantastic. And we also don't just do salmon. We've done garlic and dried mushrooms. Um, really, you can smoke anything. <laughs> this bad boy right here is something that we use seriously every other day. It's our wood-fired pizza oven uh, built from scratch. Jake and I built with our two hands. Um, we absolutely love this thing. We don't only just do pizza. We do bread and pies and quiches and... We dehydrate and cookies. I'm sure I'm leaving stuff out, but this thing is such a main staple in our family home. Um, we use it all the time. So we cook inside of here, not in there. This just stores all of our wood. So we cook in here, we build a fire. Um, it's really beautiful to see the fire like illuminate the top of the dome. The oven itself is made of a cob and brick. And then down here, we also have glass bottles to help retain the heat. So when it's the fire's pushed to the back, the bottles release all that heat. So all of this is just outside of the yurt. We do a lot of our cooking outside. Let me show you one more thing that we use outside. All right, come on over. It's 4.30, so it's getting a little dark now. This was the first project that we ever did here, it was this wok stove. Jake spent a lot of time in China, so we wanted to build an epic wok stove to make all of our Asian dishes. We use this for everything. We make a lot of stir fries. We have those bamboo steamers where we steam a lot of bowsas and dumplings and squashes. This morning we used it for Sunday pancakes, a tradition. We always have pancakes on Sunday. And the yurt is literally just right here. We use, <laughs> we use this window to pass each other stuff. If he forgot something or if I forgot something, we use it to pass each other um, all the goodies for the work stuff. I don't know if you guys can see this patch, but we had a bear try to break in on this side. Um, we also had a bear try to break on, on the other side, and then it was successful in the back there. Um, it actually got through the lattice wall, so those bears. But that was all in year one, but now we've had no bears break in year four. We're much better at bear defense um, in year four. Okay, welcome into our yurt. Fox is awake now, so I can use my grown-up voice. Our yurt is 30 foot in diameter. We have four real windows that we upgraded to, so they're glass windows, and then um, two vinyl windows, seven windows counting the dome. So we're gonna start over here. I'm just gonna kind of take you into circle because a yurt is round. So over here we have Fox's changing table, also the dog's kennel. This is Puma and Kai, as you can see there. They're just hanging out in there. Um, so here's Fox's changing table. We have his cloth diapers and his little potty. Yes, Fox is potty trained. Um, I started him about eight months and now he's 10 months and he's a rock star at it. So this is where I take care of Fox. All right, and follow me over here. So here we have the heart of the home. This, what, this is what heats up our whole yurt. And we also do a lot of our cooking on here. We have our dehydrating uh, rack right here. Um, where it's filled right now with rose hips. Um, we have some dye stuff and some mushrooms. We have this gate here, obviously, for Fox to keep him safe because it gets really hot over here and we don't want him to touch it. So you guys, we have these eco fans that are powered by heat. So the heat touches that and then it has the fans go. So when we have things drying on the dehydrating rack, um, we turn the fans this way so it uh, dehydrates all of the stuff on here. So here we have some chanterelle mushrooms that are done. And uh, we kind of go like that. Here we have some rose hips. When I want them to get hotter, um, then I hang them over the edge like this. We kind of created these really cute little like pockets to hold it closer. There's some more mushrooms, um, some wasabi. 
And then down here we have onion skins that I'm gonna use for dyeing uh, fabric in the future. So living in the rainforest, we battle a lot of moisture and mold. And year one was, like I said before, it was really challenging for us. It was really hard for us to get ahead with wood. Um, we had a lot of wet wood, so it made it very smoky in here, which also left the side cover of the yurt very like wet and moist. The inside liner had water droplets dripping all over it and we had water just pouring in here all the time it was crazy and really hard to keep up with so living in the rainforest we deal with a lot of moisture and wetness and dampness uh, so year one we battled a lot of mold and moisture on the side cover of the yurt we had a lot of water droplets um, as you can see behind us we have our jackets and our shoes all by the wood stove so it dries it out okay sorry fox <laughs> just woke up um so i'm gonna hold him yay theo who has apple all over his face. <laughs> um, as I was saying, now that we're in year four and our wood is seasoned um, and it feels almost too dry in here, which is great. Year one, it was hard for us to get it above 17. Now I think it's 23 okay. Celsius in here, which feels great. So it's almost too dry in here to where we're bringing in wet wood in here to dry out, to have a little bit of moisture in here. So it just shows you that year four, we've grown a lot since year one. Huh. So right next door, we have our bedroom, which is right underneath our loft here. Um, we have our mattress on the floor um, because Fox sleeps with us. He also takes his naps here so he can crawl out of bed by himself um, safely so it's not too high. And then just over here is our closet. It just has all of our clothes and our dresser and stuff. So that's underneath our loft. When it's Fox's nap time or bedtime, I make this into a little bedroom. So I put a sheet up in front and then a sheet on the side, which kind of makes it really dark in here because Having so many windows and a dome, it lets a lot of light in, so this makes it feel kind of dark and cozy. And over here on this side, we have our living room, a sitting area. We've had many different setups of this space. We've had wood pallet, couches, we've had just a carpet, we've had just cushions. <laughs> um, this, I think, is my favorite. This couch is really nice. It pulls out into a bed as well, so if we have guests or company, they can stay here. Or if we have a movie night, then we can, you know, pull that out and have like a big comfy couch. We also have our two Blue Eddy lithium batteries on the side, um, one right here and then one on the other side. So if we want to, you know, plug in, charge things, and we can, it's nice and easy and handy. And we charge the two Blue Eddies by the solar panels that are powered by the sun. Behind me is, this is the first thing that we ever built here on the property, this shelf. I think this is the only thing that's actually like the original thing that's been here in the yurt. Um, this is my apothecary. Uh, I have all my dried herbs that I've collected here on the property um, or around um, wild herbs and uh, berries and nuts and seeds are all right here and it's very beautiful. We have a lot of rose hips and some raspberry leaves, nettle, oat tops, um, hops, indigo. I grew indigo for the first time this year, which was very successful. Green tea, white tea, puar tea. Um, we have our different teapots up here. And yeah, that's about it over here. Here's our dining room table. I found this um, at a store. This is made of recycled pallets, which I thought was really cool. And also shrinks up into a little smaller table. Jake's apothecary, I guess. Well, it's both bars, but this is where we uh, save all of our seeds. Um, it's a really cool Chinese apothecary that has drawers that open. So it has a lot of our seeds that we've been saving over the years on there. And then I also have my tea. Uh, my tea tray on the top um, and we actually just moved this over here and I love it because I'm able to look outside while I'm drinking my tea. So now we're transitioning into our kitchen. If you follow our channel you'll see that we're building a shipping container home so we'll have a more professional setup kitchen. Ultimately this will become a guest cabin or guest yurt for our friends and family um, so our priorities aren't really set on this anymore so it's just still just really raw. But one thing that we will keep in the new house is we love the open shelving on the top. So we'll have, obviously it won't look like this, but um, we love being able to see all of our spices and herbs and dried goods like lentils and beans and split peas and oats and stuff like that. Um, we have all of our cups. So we love how everything is displayed, just be a little bit more orderly in the new house. But we did build this all ourselves um, with the live edge wood. Like this, I think was like the first boards that we've milled when we moved here. So this is a very special kitchen. It's just very 
raw and DIY. Here we have all of our pots above. We do all of our cooking at home. Um, so we have a lot of pots and I think it's cool how we hang them up here. So they're out of the way because we're very limited on space in here. So we have our sink, it's a hand pump. So it just pumps like this, which I think blows people's minds. And I love showing people our sink. There's a tank that captures rainwater outside. So that is the water that's being pulled up to here. And this pump is what pulls from that tank. There's unlimited water. We can literally pump for hours because it's the rainforest and it rains all the time here. I notice when I'm washing Fox's hands, he'll reach out and try to, and try to pump it. <laughs> it's really cute. Yeah. Peekaboo. Uh -huh. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> so welcome to Fox's area. This is where Fox hangs out and has all of his toys. We leave the door open so we can crawl out anytime. Um, we chose to kind of do a little open playpen to keep him a little bit more safe because the yurt is such a small area that he can get into a lot. He also loves his door. He'll like sit here and like try to figure it out. Bye. Whoa. Ready? I'm gonna let go. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last year tour we'll ever do. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but also really exciting. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like year 15, what happened to the yurt. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be interesting. There's a lot more around our yurt. We have the hippie hot tub. We have the bunky studio. Uh, we have our outdoor shower. Um, <laughs> and you can watch all of this on our channel. Um, we have all the videos of building everything. So go and definitely check those out. Hey. So if you want to watch full videos of us building our composting toilet, our outdoor shower, our hippie hot tub, and even the garden that surrounds our uh, yurt, definitely go and check that out.